Hello everyone, this is Ray Kierna with Copter Concepts. Um, I have been asked to do a tutorial in regards to how to build one of my helicopters. So I am going to attempt to do this, it may be in three or four parts, so please bear with me. Um, we're going to start here with showing the major components of one of my helicopters. Unlike most rubber powered helicopters that have been seen on YouTube or on the internet, they are not semi-scale or scale models, they are one or two dimensional models. My models are full three dimensional model helicopters. Uh, we are going to go through the Bell Huey construction. Now, As you notice, there are two complete side frames, a left and a right. Boom and fuselage are built together as one complete unit. Now I have constructed some of the other major components, so after pretty much making these components, the rest of it is pretty much self-forward. My helicopters are designed to be stretch wound like that of a normal airplane. The neat thing about helicopters is they don't even have to be colored, covered with tissue to fly. They can be completely uncovered and they still will fly. So it's kind of neat. The other fact of my type of helicopters is that they are capable of being put in a winding stooge and being stretch wound for you know maximum winds. So I'm going to go over the components here for you and uh, we'll go from there. So as you see there are two complete side frames of left and right of the Bell Huey. Now further on down the line you're going to see some other components that I have already made. Um, this part here is the tail rotor pulley. Now if you look at the tail rotor pulley you'll see a black strip. Now these are made from laminates of 3 32nd inch balsa disc and 1 32nd inch balsa disc with a wire shaft put through it and a bearing. The black strip that you do see on the pulley is a very fine grade of 800 sandpaper. This is wrapped around that balsa center core to prevent the belt from the main pulley and the tail rotor pulley from slipping. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you are putting this sandpaper on that balsa core. Now this is the main rotor pulley again same thing it is a lamination of 3 32nd inch center balsa core and uh, two discs of 1 32nd inch balsa. Again, the black strip you see in the center of this pulley on the balsa core is 800 super fine sandpaper to help prevent the belt from slipping. It works quite well. Now, as you see here, we have another component that I did construct. This is what I call your pinion drive. This is what drives the spur gear to the gearbox. The rubber motor runs from this pinion drive up to the nose plug, which is going to be here, and there will be a hook attached to that nose plug, so this way the rubber motor is going to run all the way from the nose plug here all the way back here to where the pinion drive is going to hook up there. And as I build this and construct it, you will see what I'm talking about, but I am showing some of the parts here that are necessary for this type of helicopter. Not very hard to construct either, it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, next component I am going to show is the gearbox itself, it's one inch square. This will sit on former F2. Now this is what drives the main rotor from the pinion drive and the spur gear assembly, which will be shown later in another video. Now this particular gearbox attaches to former F2. Now this is former F2 and you will see there are balsa rails that run up and down F2. Now this former is for, and those rails are for the gearbox sitting in those rails like that. It, the gearbox can physically slide up and down in these rails and you can see where the dashed lines are. That's where it should go but if you need minor adjustments to get your alignment correct this will slide up and down within those rails so you can have a very good alignment process for this gearbox. Again, the gearbox is not hard to make. It's very straightforward. Two mitered gears, aluminum tubing shafts, they're pinned, and you got a couple of brass washers and a plastic 332nd inch diameter styrene tube for couplers. Now on these couplers, you'll see here's the top coupler here and the bottom coupler here. Bottom coupler attaches to the drive shaft that leads from the spur gear. The upper coupler here attaches to the main rotor shaft. And as we get to the assembly part of this, 
you will see what I'm talking about. Now, these are the basic main formers. Uh, the components that you see here are actually, is going to be actually building most of this. So this is what you're pretty much going to need to make uh, prior to assembly. So you've got form F1A. This is where the nose plug attaches. This is the very first former that goes here. F2, which is going to be your gearbox former. So F2 is going to go at this location here. As you see on the plans here, F2 goes here onto the side brain. And as I construct it, you will see. Now this is former F4. This is where your pinion drive mounts into. And that's going to be back here. And this hole above that square hole is where your drive shaft enters and there's going to be a alignment plate that attaches here and we'll see that later during construction in another video. Now this particular model has a built-in blast tube. The blast tube is going to mount into the fuselage about at that location and these two parts, these formers, RA and RB are the blast tube retainers. They will go into the fuselage, the tube will slide in between these two retainers at this location here and this location here as you see on a plan so it'll basically be here and here and then that'll hold the blast tube in position. Now you also see I do have both landing gear assemblies for front and rear already made as well. So basic starting point is going to be building both side frames left and right making your pulleys now your pulleys you want to make sure they're as center as possible and no wobbles if possible I mean the smoother they work obviously the better you'll assemble the pinion drive you will assemble the gearbox you will assemble former F1A F2 and F4 both of your blast tube retainer rings and both landing gear sets. Once this is all built, now the complete assembly of the fuselage and the formers can begin and that will be shown in another video as I do that. Um, again, a helicopter is not much different than building a model airplane. Um, I would have to say the hardest part of building anything on this is really the gearbox and just, just making sure that both gears are aligned properly, a little bit of fiddling, and it's not really that complex to do. Okay, I've built quite a few gearboxes in the past, and they both, you know, they've all worked reasonably well, so there is no real problem with assembling that. And as we go on, you'll see how I align the gearing, you will see how everything is aligned within the fuselage and built. And as that progresses, we will get closer and closer to completing this model. Total time so far building all components, including the, the formers that you see here, the pulleys, the gearbox, the pinion drive, the side frames, and the landing gear assemblies is probably about a total of maybe 16 to 22 hours of work so far. And that's on and off work. You know, two hours here, five hours there, so on and off work, but total hours so far I say would be between the 18 and 22 hour mark. Um, again, I will complete more videos on the uh, continued assembly of this model helicopter. So welcome to Helicopter uh, Copter Concepts Helicopter Construction Class 101, Part 1. We are constructing a Bell Huey rubber powered free flight model helicopter. Uh, please, if you like what you see and you want to see more, please hit the like button and subscribe and follow me along with my work in as much detail as you can stand. And once we are done constructing this particular helicopter, we will also be doing initial flight tests. Thank you for joining us at Copter Concepts and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.